Okay, so what we're going to do here is we've had a lot of questions about structure and how we do our laundry business and how we stay organized. So I figured it's a lot easier to show what we do than to try and explain it every time. So I have Ryan Fulcher here. He's going to be our model and uh, he's going to show us. This is first, this is where we our employees come and clock in. Here are just some visual instructions of how to clock in. They take a card. Ryan, if you want to let's just clock in a random employee as an example. And just swipe it in front. And it says clocked in. And then they do the same thing and it says clocked out. It's pretty simple. Um, I guess visual stimulation when it says clocked in and clocked out, green and red. So, once they come and clock out, then our employees will head down to the laundry business. So now we just walk downstairs and this is the laundry closet. This is where we store everything. Uh, it's a bit messy right now. We've got lots of just recycled hangers here. Um, and it is an off day during the summer which is our off season so we're just doing this you won't see what laundry looks like in full bloom but you can see operationally how we treat each bag so we have one bag here and as you can see here this tag is red and that is color coded based off of where the customers live so different fraternity houses on campus different dormitories or residential customers have different colored tags based off of their location so that our delivery crews on different days know to deliver they don't have to read each specific address they can just say hey all the orange bags go to this dorm all the green bags go to that dorm and the only time you need specific addresses is for residential customers that are red so Here's the bag, and these are just our shells, just basic plastic shells that we got at Lowe's that are numbered one, two, and so on, up and down, left to right. And on each shelf, you have the visuals, dirty clothes, yes, wash. And we do that because we pick up Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and deliver Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So to get everything done in time, the bags have to be done in order. So if we picked up Monday and loaded up, and during the fall these shelves are completely full of bags. So if we fill it up on Monday and we get the majority of them done and we leave, you know, bags over here in this bottom corner for Monday and then we bring our Tuesday delivery and fill up all the shelves and leave all of Mondays down here in the bottom quarter, they're not going to get done in time to be delivered. So everything has to be transferred over to shelf one, two, three, and then we do the bags and process the bags in order by the shelf. So that's why we do that. So Ryan here will take the bag, since it's next in line and the only thing on the shelf, and we'll take it to the sorting table. So Takes it like that. Hey, how's it going? All right, and he's walking to the sorting table. Okay, and so Ryan is now carrying the bag of dirty clothes to our sorting table. And this is what our sorting table looks like. We sort the clothes into tops. As you can see there, there's a little prompt or question. Did you turn the tops right side out? So we put all the tops here, all the bottom or the towels and other. So sheets, hats, bare onesies. Say hi to the camera, Mike. Cheese. <laughs> Did you count twice? Another prompt right there. All right. Next we have socks. Did you turn all the socks right side out? So you put all the socks here, and then on this section right here. The bottoms, did you turn the bottoms right side out? So we separate it very simply. Anything on the top of your body goes here. Anything on the bottom of your body goes here. Okay? And then all this is is just a regular plastic table and some blue 
painter state is a painter state painter state yep so pretty basic so now ryan he just takes the bag plops it on the table and we typically the section where we use towels and other is where we just dump out all the clothes onto the table we have some pla little plastic gloves here uh, a majority of people uh, have a preference to use gloves. I use gloves because dirty clothes are gross. But some people don't like to wear gloves and that's fine. They just wash their hands often. And the clothes aren't all... Your average clothes, if you think of your own clothes, they're not typically all that soiled. Um, so we don't typically get things that are really, really gross or dirty. So Ryan here is dumping all the clothes out onto the table and he just emptied the bag to, and shook the bag to make sure it was completely empty. This table is isolated by itself so that we can know, see down here we have clothes on the floor and we can know that they didn't fall from any other potential table. So Ryan just, I mean, pretty obviously just picks up the dirty clothes. So next he just starts to sort the clothes, so we can just watch uh, the clothes get sorted. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's might as well have footage of the whole process. And so as Ryan is sorting, so he's going through taking the shirts, which is the top, just shaking it out and putting it, he's sorting, he's putting the bottoms over here and then the pile just starts to dwindle down. Obviously each bag is different, whether it's girls clothes or kids clothes or adult men's clothes. Obviously, they're typically male, male clothes are, are bigger, they take up more space, so you don't have as many items in the bag, so sorting and folding is quicker. Um, so sorting typically takes any, takes about 10 minutes, 20 minutes if you're pretty slow, um, but it's very, very important to be accurate in everything that you do. The three things that we emphasize here are accuracy number one, quality number two, and speed number three. Because it doesn't matter how fast you are, if, say you're folding, it doesn't matter how fast you fold if you're folding terribly and it looks really bad. And then quality, it doesn't matter how good of a fold you have and if you're making everything look pristine and perfect, if you are mixing up people's clothes and sending back the wrong clothes to people. And so you have to have a mixture of all three of those things, but in that order, accuracy number one, quality number two, and speed number three. Because we are running a business here and we don't want to take you know, three hours to fold one bag because that's not efficient or effective. You're probably just not, it's probably not the right fit for you. So as you can see, Ryan is continuing to sort here. And so I will use this time to explain the rest of the laundry room. As you can see, we only have two employees here working right now just because it's a bit slower in the day. So we have, this is a sorting table. And now we have a folding table, which has a flip fold is what they're called. Just a little piece of plastic. You can get them on Amazon for 16 to 20 bucks. They are amazing. Ours, <laughs> after a ton of use, started to break, so we have some duct tape on it. But I'll, and we'll show you later how things get folded. And just uh, another little prompt. Here's a little cup of coffee. Uh, did you count twice? Here are hangers, another folding table. This is our wrap station. Okay, this is our wrap station. So we just have a little rolling cart here that we had around the building. Um, this is a paper cutter that we got from Uline. 
This is wrap, just plastic wrap, um, like saran wrap that um, we got. Where do we get that? We got that from NortonSupply.com. And so this is our folding table. And then another, I mean, this is an old file cabinet that is on wheels that we have another wrap, rolling wrap station on it. So we're not trying to be real fancy and buy a lot of things, we just make do with what we have. So this is another folding table. So we have three folding tables and two sorting tables. One out here and another one inside our laundry room. Right there. So we can have two people sorting at one time in the morning. These are our sorting carts. We have five sorting carts that wait to be put um, into the washer machines. So this is just the assembly line and they go in order by one, two, three, four, and so on. As you can see here, these are just, these are just old carpet pieces that we had uh, with some paper and duct tape numbering them. We're not really fancy here, we just try and make things as organized as possible. And these are folding carts. They're tall carts that once things come out of the dryer, they sit here in order as well to be folded. Lastly over here we have, we hang, which we'll get to, we hang clothes that are nicer, button-down shirts, dress pants, things like that. We'll hang them and then they have name tags going and color-coded based off of where they're going back to. And so we have that. And then over here is our hanging contraption that we got from Cleaner Supply. So we just have some plastic bags, the same sort of things you would get from a dry cleaner. This is our plastic bag wrapper. Uh, and then these are our colored tags based off of locations where they live. So as you can see, if the bag tag is orange, then tag with an orange one and write their name on it. Orange, blue, purple, green, light blue, pink, white. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different colors based off of the location. Okay. So that's just kind of what our laundry operation looks like and all the stations that we have. And now we'll check back in on Ryan as he sorts. So he has all the tops, bottoms. There's one towel, all the socks right here. So he has, everything looks very organized. There's nothing on the floor. So what do we do next, Mr. Ryan? So he goes and um, you can put in one and two. We need okay. So now we're back again after uh, technical difficulties with the camera. Um, so what we have here is our color coding system. We have tons of they're just Velcro uh, laminated sheets with a little graphic image of a white shirt and a dark shirt. They're blue and they have a little Velcro on them so that we can tag each set of customers' clothes. This is separate than the color coding that I, about where they come from as a bag. Um, but so, okay, that, never mind. Um, let's see here. You have this specific one is a white tag but it's on green dots. So it, the tag doesn't matter when it comes to this. Um, you have, so blue, everything's color-coded blue here. All the socks, so small items that can be misplaced. So socks, bras, panties, things of that nature go in the mesh bags that match the Velcro colors. So Ryan then comes and just grabs the, oh, he's going for purple. Uh, he grabs the purple colors as well as a sh inventory sheet that we just have right here. Mm 
And then he, I'll flip around so we can see. So he writes the customer's name, date, the color of the Velcro tag, which is purple. Writes that on there, as well as the time that he sorted, and he initialed it. So you can see here on the sheet. And then now he starts to count. You can see here with accuracy, it's very important to count accurately. So he's grabbing one shirt at a time and making sure that he is not grabbing two shirts by accident. And say, you know, you accidentally count 15 shirts instead of 16, or vice versa. When the folder starts to count after they get all the clothes out of the machines and then they count to make sure that the numbers match up. If you weren't paying attention when you're sorting and counting or just tried to go too fast and the number is off, it's gonna really stress the folder out because the number is gonna be off. You didn't lose any clothes, but you were just too lazy as a sorter to be accurate. So that's why we double count everything and we count very meticulously because it's not fair to the other guys for you not to be accurate. So you just count it twice and he writes down on this sheet. So 20 tops, one towel. Then he does the same with the bottoms and the socks. Say hey to the camera Jackson. So Jackson is hanging up some clothes right now. Jackson is a video camera. Do you want to say anything to the camera? No, it's not a picture, it's a video. No? Okay. Jackson's not much of a talker. <laughs> Alright, we're back to Ryan. We're checking in. He just counted all the socks. Now he's just double counting them. Good note while he is doing that. Uh, we also have another line right there that, as you can see, notes or observations. He wrote down odd number of socks. Sometimes people send odd things or maybe there's paint or a rip or something that is very noticeable in certain clothes. We'll write it down just as a note because um, we didn't cause it. So one note, while he is counting, he puts all the socks into, splits them out over two mesh bags. Now the reason we have two mesh bags instead of one is because sometimes someone sends a lot of small garments that would go into a mesh bag, uh, specifically socks, and you just cram them all into one bag. It creates a bit of a, what we like to call a sock burrito where the outside socks will get washed and dried and the inside socks will stay wet. So that just slows down all the operations because you have to re-dry socks. So, problem solved with getting two mesh bags instead of one. So now Ryan's just gonna count these bottoms. Same way he counted everything else, accurately. Uh, so, a note to make while he's doing that, we have these little guys up here. Uh, some cameras that are watching down on the sorting table. They are a, a lifesaver. Um, what they do is just they, as you can see up there, we've got two more, and they're just staring at the tables. So say Ryan was trying to blitz through sorting and just did not count accurately, and our numbers are off when we're folding. 
we can go back to the cameras and we have our employees trained to do that. Go back to the cameras and just check. They can rewind to when Ryan wrote on here the time that he did it. And he can go back and watch the sorting table and watch the clothes get counted. So say there's actually 16 shirts and Ryan writes down 15. So when they're folding, they're worried that somehow in the process someone else's shirt got in there. But actually, it's the right amount. Ryan just counted wrong. So they can go back and watch the camera footage and watch Ryan actually count 16 shirts, but accidentally wrote down the wrong number. So those cameras have been really helpful in just solving little problems like that. Because without that, we would have no idea. The number would be off and we would just say, well, uh, everything seems to go with the right customer. And that's just not, when you're dealing with other people's clothes, that's not, <laughs> you don't want that kind of ambiguity. So the cameras have been awesome. So he's finishing up. Hey Mike, you want to say anything to the camera? <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to say? We're teaching people how to, uh, how to do laundry. You don't want to say anything? That's cool. Totally fine. Okay, so he just finished counting all the socks and it's written down. It's real good. So now we take an empty cart. We got these carts. Uh, they are RB wire carts. Um, economic carts. I just googled and bought them from the lowest price. Oh. You don't need to use wire carts. That's just what we have. And as you can see, we have a, a piece of cardboard in the middle because we're real fancy like that. Uh, that just separates the lights and the darks. So it doesn't matter what side you put the lights and the darks on, it's just that way we separate them. And we actually wash all of our clothes on cold water. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily matter because when you, um, clothes will bleed with warm water, um, so we don't really run that risk. So, but we still sort lights and darks just for the heck of it. A uh, little well, fun fact about laundry, the two big risks of laundry are one, clothes bleeding, and two, clothes shrinking. Uh, bleeding happens in the washer, shrinking happens in the dryer. So we have systems in place like cold water, um, and custom settings on the washer to make sure that things don't bleed. Uh, in the dryer, we have auto sensing dryers that will stop once it senses that there's no more moisture left because if things get over dried, that's when they start to shrink and they get cooked like that. Which is, fun fact, why you don't often want to wash a bunch of towels in with your clothes at the same time because your shirts will dry faster than the towels and the towels will keep on drying while the shirts have finished drying and will bake your shirts and you run the risk of them shrinking. So, a little fun fact, while Ryan, as you can see here, he's just putting lights in one side and darks in the other. Those mesh bags, uh, doesn't really matter where they go. And done. So next we have these little, tiny little paper clips just got them from Staples. And then we just throw the Velcro tags as well as the sheet. As you can see here, so we've got our sheet. And if you ever want these, just a Word document we can send to you. Down here, this job coach quality assurance checklist. So each person's job coach has to initial, see the sorting setting, that the inventory was accurate so that you're actually watching your employee and not playing words with friends or something. 
and that there's no items on the floor. The inventory was accurate. I'll be Ryan's job coach. And there is nothing on the floor we saw on the camera. So they initial that. And that's just a little barrier put in place where, if you want to sign it, um, a little barrier put in place so that people are taking ownership of their work and actually paying attention. So this as well as the purple Velcro tags just get clipped onto the front of the cart. And then the cart would then go into the assembly line at the end to go into the laundry room eventually. But we're going to skip all that because it's a slow day and we're just doing this for training or video making purposes. So we'll roll the cart inside and Ryan will hang the bag on the purple hook. So, purple Velcro colors. Bag is purple, Velcro colors here. Purple mesh bags in there. And the customer's bag is hanging on purple. And the inventory sheets say purple. So, purple, purple, purple. That's how we keep everything all together. So Ryan first, he just opened up the washers. They're available. He will double check to make sure that the washers are empty and do that by spinning the washers. These are just residential machines, high efficiency front load machines. So they spin really fast to try and get out any excess moisture before they go to the dryers. So things could stick on top of the tub if you're not careful. So you gotta double check after emptying the washers, double check before putting new clothes in. And so Ryan will load the washers. We have in the log over here. Press and hold button once for detergent. See, that's my hand. You like that? It's my right hand. Um, so this is just a nice little contraption here that spits out exactly uh, whatever amount of detergent that you want. We have it set at one ounce of detergent. So you just press the button here, hold it for a minute, or you know, a second and it spits out exactly one ounce of detergent into these little cups right here. So we're not uh, putting in way too much detergent and way too little. Um, and he takes it and just pours it right into the little detergent cup. You all know how to do laundry. It's not that hard. And then, so just our settings, you can wash things however you want, but we do a speed wash on cold water And then on here, just some visual instructions that we have for our employees to refer to of how exactly to put the clothes in the machine to get everything started. Uh, it's muscle memory for everybody now because they've been doing it for so long. After he does that, he puts the, look at that Velcro right onto the washers. Velcro over there. And he's gonna load that one up with detergent. And as you can see, we have this machine is the purple dark clothes. This machine is the purple light clothes. That goes with this bag hanging on purple. So everything stays together. We know what goes with what. And the inventory sheet just gets clipped right onto the machine. So it follows the bag. We circle uh, the clothes went into washers three and four. And this question here, were the washers empty before loading? And are the washers on the correct setting? Two simple questions for the job coach to initial and just say yes. It's very important, very, very, very important that the washers are empty before you load new clothes. You think that's intuitive, but um, sometimes it's not. So be very careful because once you mix clothes in a washer, it's nearly impossible to sort out two customers from each other. So now the washers are loaded, they're ready to go and move on to the next thing. So kind of like a, uh, a cooking show, you know, where you show how to bake the pie, make it every, all over, put the pie together and you put it in the oven and magically you have a pie already made for you. 
uh, because you don't want to watch a cooking show where people just stare at the oven for 45 minutes. We're going to do the same thing. We're not going to stare at the washers and dryers forever. We're going to move on to a finished bag right here. So we're moving from purple, say about a purple, to the white customer. Summer Crystal is her name. They'll never know that we're filming here. So this is just the dryers just finished. And so you can see the inventory sheets that followed. You've got the initials from the job coaches, as well as the washers and the dryers circled. And so they will come out into the um, tall folding cart. And just one thing that's very important. We didn't film the transfer from the washers to the dryer because it's just like you transfer any clothes from the washer to the dryer. But it is very, very, very important to make sure that you are accurate in what you're doing. That you do not leave clothes in the washer. Or you do not take clothes from the washers and put them into a dryer that already has clothes in it. Just the little things that you have to pay attention to. So. So Ryan will just empty out the dryers now. Uh, so what we do, basically shirts, you know, some polos right there. Anything that you don't really want wrinkled, we just dangle over the side. Things like boxers, towels, sweatpants, etc. Just throw in there, who cares. Um, you know, but a polo, if it's sitting in the cart for a little while, like you saw the assembly line of clothes to be folded, you don't want everything just bundled up in the cart because then that will not look very good. Very important, Ryan just emptied the dryer and he gave the tub a spin to make sure that it was in fact empty. The little details. And just like the sorting carts, you just clip the Velcro color on it. Ryan, do you have anything to say to the camera? Just a, a mute model at the moment. <laughs> uh, nothing to say. Make sure your clothes are always dry. Yeah, good. Good little point. Make sure the clothes are dry. Uh, sometimes they're not fully dry, so, you know, don't send back wet clothes. The little, uh, like I said, the little things. As you show the uh, to be hung in. On the sides. Yeah. We have six dryers, four washers at the moment. Uh, we started with uh, two washers, two dryers, and just grew as uh, our customer base grew. And we needed to put out more volume. The reason we have more dryers than washers at the moment is because, as you all know, dryers typically take longer than washers. So they were our bottleneck. So now we have six dryers. So you know, say clothes go into one and two washer here, they can move up to just five and six, or two and three, or three and four can go to dryers one and two, just whichever ones are open. But it's important to stay on track with everything so you don't get anything mixed up. So, Ryan just took everything out. You can see the socks and towels and such are gym shorts are inside the cart and the shirts and stuff are hanging over the edge and now he'll just take it out of the laundry room to our wonderful folding area. It would go into the assembly line of clothes ready to be folded. There's another cart ready to be folded. Um, but what we'll do just for uh, simplicity's sake is we'll just take the cart that we just had and proceed to fold this cart, just since it's smaller. Less uh, filming. So Ryan will go on to a folding table that's open. We typically have three to four employees working at one time. Um, beyond that right now would just be too much. I don't think we'll be getting in each other's way. So this is all we need. He's just folding, you know, gym shorts or gym shorts. You 
It's not a very complicated process to fold gym shorts. Towels, same thing. Towels are towels. As you can see over here, Jackson is almost finished. He's got his pile of shirts over here. Don't they look good? Jackson, you're the man. You know that? You do an awesome job. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure, bro. Hey, you want to see the camera? Do you like working in laundry? Thank you. Okay. Bert, do you like working there? Oh, yes. I love the laundry. It is the best. <laughs> it is the best. Good. I'll pay you 20 bucks later. <laughs> Let's count, Dad. So he's just folding the towels and everything up. Let's count one more time. Count twice. It's important to, I mean, the folding quality is very important because that is our final product back to the consumer. If we, I always joke that with college students, if we sent back their dirty clothes that they sent us, we didn't wash them, we just folded them nicely, I bet you half of them wouldn't even notice. Uh, I've, <laughs> I wouldn't have noticed if I was in college. So that's, that just uh, illustrates how important folding is because that is our final product. That is what our, the roommates of our customers see. That's what would make people want to become our customer because it looks that good. So he's just folding up some socks. This is riveting footage at the moment. I know whoever's watching this is uh, really enthralled. That word. So now he's going to uh, get out the flip fold that I showed you earlier and fold some shirts. This is a really neat little contraption. One thing that we typically do, uh, we take one of the white, put it on the table. That way, just in case that cart somehow just magically rolls away, we know that the clothes on this table go with white. Match the clothes in the cart, they go with white. So you lay the shirt down flat, upside down, make sure that the wrinkles are out, flatten it out, and you just flip it, one, two, three. And it creates a very uniform, perfectly folded shirt. Ryan, that's awesome. You should feel good. That's Ryan's bike over there. He biked to work today. These are uh, those dry fit shirts. They are tricky. So I'm just backing up right now to give a bird's eye view or a side view, I guess. Uh, so you typically have three people folding at one time and people just cranking away. Have a good time. We'll have some music playing and it's just lots of fun. Hey, you and Hey, you and you want to come say hi to the camera? Come here to the I've had bad luck. No one really wants to talk to the camera. Yeah. But I, I know you would want to talk to the camera. What do you want to say? Give me a hug. It's nice to see you, bud. What do you want to say to the camera? Camera in? Yeah? About Friday fun night. Friday fun night? Yes. You going? Yes. Cool. What are you doing right now? Well, what about movie night? What, about me? Well, what are you doing right now? Working and making candles. You're making candles? That's awesome. It's one of our other businesses. He makes candles over there. Yes. Thanks for hanging out, Ewan. Alright, we're back to back to Ryan. He's just finishing up folding the shirts. They're looking good. So you can see everything's kind of put together. You have all your bottoms. Underwear, gym shorts. You have your towels, your two socks, your pile of shirts. So we're going to send everything back 
all together. Hey. Hey guys. Hi, I'm Tom. How are you? I'm filming right now. Do you want to say anything to the camera? Oh, sure. What What do you like about your job? I am. Um, I really like. I really like uh, the the experience that I have of working, of uh, basically folding laundry, um, washing and drying it, and also um, also stacking them in those. Um, Checking them in the closet over there. Awesome. Well, thanks. Well, you do an awesome job. What I'm doing right now is um, we've been filming the whole process for people that may want to start a laundry business oh, like I this. See. Oh, I so, see. So, figured it'd be easy to just have footage of how we do everything. Oh. You think? Thanks, Tom. Yeah. So now that Ryan has finished folding everything, we got nice, neat piles here. He takes the inventory sheet and he will recount all the clothes and make sure that all the numbers match up, which they should always match up. Five and five. Two bottoms, two socks, and three towels. Numbers all match up. And then so he writes down his time that he finished folding and the amount and the job coach would initial saying that the items are folded and stacked neatly as well as the inventory being accurate. So now you Ryan will just there. Sorry about that. wrap the clothes. So this is a very small bag, uh, not very full. So what we typically do is we'll wrap up, you know, all the shirts together, all the pants together, all the socks or the bottoms together, all the socks and whatnot together. Um, but it's such a small bag, um, there's kind of no point in doing that. We'll just kind of combine, as you saw, them, combine the shirts and the towels together, just to conserve plastic, because you know it's actually uh, two cents a foot. Uh, that kind of adds up over time, so we run everything on business principles here. So look at that. See, you can't, I'd say that is beautiful. And that is perfect advertisement for our business right there. Getting that back. The plastic wrap, the reason we do that is because we send the clothes back in the same bag that they sent their dirty clothes in. And that would just be gross if we didn't <laughs> wrap it up somehow, so. I think it's kind of fun, it's kind of like a, making a present. And there we go. So now Ryan has his folded and wrapped clothes here. He takes the colors the white mesh bag and the white colors and the inventory sheet back to the laundry room and grabs the bag. And real quick we just make sure and match up. Customer name is Summer Crystal. The name on the bag is Summer Crystal. You never know. That is not a mistake that pretty much happens ever, but can't be too safe. Pretty cool bags, right? You got EV laundry on them. Three fifty-five a bag at uh, 
cleanersupply.com. You can get cheaper bags uh, that don't have custom print on it, but you know, we're cool like that. Figured the bags do a little advertising for us. So he finishes up, takes the finished bag of clean clothes back to the closet. And that is the process of a bag. And uh, one person does not follow the same bag throughout the process. It's usually touched by many different hands, which is why the inventory sheets and the job coach tracking is so important. So this is a, our shelf of clean clothes that need to be delivered. As you can, there's a decent number of clothes here, but it doesn't come close to what it's like in the fall. So it's just kind of slow right now. So yeah, that is it. And uh, hope you enjoyed your virtual tour of the systems and structures we have here at EV Wonder. Say bye, Ryan. Bye. You did a great job, bud. <laughs>